When the home computer first started to become popular, everything was done within different applications. Need to type a letter? Use a word processor. Need to create a presentation for work? Use a presentation tool. Want to listen to music? Use a music player. Nowadays, many of those things have been moved to some form of website. There are still bits of computer software that can do these things, but oftentimes it is much more simple to use a web application. This is especially true when trying to communicate through email or a social media platform like Facebook. Since most things are done on the internet, most people will need to use something called a web browser. In this video, we're going to go over the basics of how to use a web browser so that you can feel more comfortable getting around on the internet. Some people like to call a web browser a window into the internet, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless you know what the internet is. The internet is kind of like a network of telephones, and in fact, it actually was a network of telephones originally. In the age of dial-up internet, a computer would use your phone number to actually dial the number of another computer so that they could talk and exchange information. If you needed to get a recipe from a website, your computer would dial up the server, which is basically a very fancy computer, and then that server would find the recipe saved on its hard drive and then send you the recipe through your phone line. We don't often use dial-up internet anymore as a faster option, usually broadband internet or fiber internet is more common. However, the same general structure is still around. When you try to get a recipe, your computer connects to a server, which then finds the information you're looking for and then sends it back to you. But this is on a very large scale. You see, while you might be looking for a recipe, someone else might also be looking for the same recipe or a different recipe. Someone might be checking their email or the weather or playing games or listening to music. There's an estimated four and a half billion people connected to the internet and any number of them could be using this network at any given time. This giant collection of people connecting to servers and computers is what we call the internet. So back to the question of what is a web browser? Well, you can think of your web browser as a virtual telephone. You type in the name or number called an address and your web browser will dial that number and give you whatever is on the other end. That might be a recipe, an email, or pictures of cats. All right, so now that we are on the same page about what a web browser is, let's get into how to use it. In this example, I'm on a FreeGeek computer that is loaded with the latest Linux Mint operating system. No worries if you don't know what that means, I'm just saying that this should look pretty familiar if you have received a computer from FreeGeek. Now we can get to our web browser in a couple of different ways. The first of which is to go to our menu in the bottom left corner, and if we click on it, we'll see our menu and we'll see that it is broken up into a few different sections. We're gonna move our mouse to this middle section and find the internet category. Then on the rightmost side, we'll see that Linux Mint is only showing programs that relate to the internet. I'm going to use the Firefox web browser, but if you have Google Chrome installed, then that's a fine option as well. Actually, that brings up a good point. There are different web browsers. If you used a computer a couple decades ago, you might remember Netscape or Internet Explorer. Today, some of the most common web browsers are Google Chrome, Firefox, Microsoft Edge, or Safari if you happen to be using an Apple computer. This video is going to be a pretty broad overview of how to use a web browser, so it doesn't matter which one you are using. Again, we're just going to be using Firefox since it is our preferred browser, but you should use whichever one you want. Okay, so again, in our menu under the internet category, I can left click on the Firefox web browser to launch the program. Also, you might have noticed this little icon next to the words, and you might have noticed that it matches another icon, one that is on our panel. This Firefox icon on the panel is a shortcut to opening the Firefox web browser. So when you want to get on the internet using either the Firefox web browser shortcut on the panel, or going through the menu, either one is a great option. No matter which path you choose to take, you still need to left click on the icon and that will open the web browser. And now that we've got it open, let's take a look at the primary sections of our browser. The first and largest section is what we will call the content section. This is where all of the pictures and text from websites will appear when you type in an address. On the right side of our content section, we will find the scroll bar. 
This scroll bar allows you to move up and down on a web page to see more content or words and pictures that you wouldn't have been able to see otherwise. Above the content section, we have our address bar. The address bar is where you type in the website that you want to visit. After you type in the address, you press the enter key or return if you're on an Apple computer, and your computer attempts to find that website. To the left of our address bar, we have some basic navigation controls, but we're going to come back to that. First, let's just try getting to a website. To go to a website, you need to know its address. This is usually something like www.freegeek.org or www.google.com. Previously, typing in the www dot part was really important. Nowadays, not so much. You can usually get away with just knowing the last two parts, freegeek.org or google.com. So let's try it. To type in an address, you can left click anywhere in the address bar to highlight the current address. Then you can press the delete or backspace key to remove that address. Once the bar is clear, you can now type in the new address that you want to visit. Let's try freegeek.org. I'm going to type in freegeek.org and then press the enter key on my keyboard. Assuming that I have typed in the address correctly, my computer is connected to the internet, and FreeGeek's website isn't broken, I should be able to see all of the information on the website. Looks like everything working, so that's a success. I can go to another website like ebay.com by, again, clicking in the address bar, deleting the FreeGeek address, typing in ebay.com, and pressing the enter key. And bam, there's eBay. So that's the most basic way to get around the internet, but let's say you didn't know the specific address of a website. How are you supposed to find it? Well, that's where a search engine comes in. You might have heard people say, I'm going to Google it. Really, what people mean when they say that is that they are going to search the internet for an answer. To search the internet, you need a search engine. The most popular search engine is Google, so a lot of people shorten that sentence by just saying, I'm going to Google it. However, there are other search engines around. Popular examples include Google, Bing, DuckDuckGo, and StartPage. We're not gonna get into the pros and cons of each of these search engines right now, but we are going to suggest you either use DuckDuckGo or StartPage. Both of these websites do a better job of protecting your privacy while online as compared to something like Bing or Google. So let's go to DuckDuckGo.com to see what a search engine is all about. Again, we click the address bar, type in the address, in this case that is DuckDuckGo.com, press the enter key, and bam, we're there. So with most search engines, you should see a logo of the website you're on, and then a box that kind of looks like an address bar in the middle of the page. This is called a text box, and is a space where you type in text. In the case of a search engine, this could also be called a search bar. So let's say we wanted to visit FreeGeek's website, but didn't know the website address. We could click in the search bar, type FreeGeek, and press the enter key. Now DuckDuckGo will search the internet for the most relevant websites for the term FreeGeek. In this example, it looks like DuckDuckGo did a pretty good job of finding relevant results. The top result is FreeGeek Portland's website, and below that we also have the website for FreeGeek Twin Cities, Free Geek's eBay store, and Free Geek Chicago. If we scroll down, we'll see a few more relevant options. Now, you'll also notice that each of these titles are blue in color, and when we move our mouse cursor over them, we'll see that the title gets underlined. This is generally a good indication that this is a link. A link is an instruction for your web browser. Usually, this will connect you to a different website or a different page on the same website. You can think of it like typing in a new address without needing to type it in yourself. You can just click on the link and your browser will take you to that address. So let's click on this top link. It looks like this takes us to Free Geek Portland's website. And here we can see and do all the things we need or wanted to, just like as if we had typed in the freegeek.org address into our address bar. But let's say we clicked on this link without knowing that this was Free Geek Portland's website and we were actually looking for Free Geek Chicago. Should we go up to our address bar, type in duckduckgo.com and do it all again? No, there is actually a faster way. Instead, we can tell the browser to go back to the page we were on just before this one. 
To do that, we can go up to the navigation controls, which are again to the left of our address bar. Then you'll see a left arrow, a right arrow, a circular arrow, and a home icon. The left arrow means go back, and the right arrow means go forward. And the circular arrow means restart the page that I'm currently on, and the home button will take us to something called our home page. In this instance, we can press the back arrow, the left arrow, and it will take us back to our search results. Now that we have gone backwards, we can go forwards again by pressing the right arrow. You can kind of think of this like turning pages in a book. If we use the left arrow key, we turn back the page, and if we turn and if we press the right arrow key, we can turn the page forward. The refresh button, the circular arrow, is for when you think a website is stuck and needs to be restarted. This could be because some pictures didn't load properly or it is acting strangely slow. And with that, we hope you have a good understanding of what the internet is what a web browser does, and how to use it. Please feel free to rewatch this video if you have missed something, or if you just want to hear it again. You can do that by refreshing the page with the circular arrow if you are on a computer, or by pressing a similar button in the middle of the video when it ends in a few seconds. Anyway, that's all for now, so thanks for watching, we hope you learned something, have a great day, and thanks for supporting Free Geek.